four years ago, before the previous uh, presidential election, uh, I analysed uh, a report prepared by the non-partisan Committee for a Responsible Budget, and that showed the costings of, uh, of both programs, and uh, that, that piece was very well received. Uh, the original report for them came out last week, and I will write up uh, a version of a, of a review of that uh, in the next few weeks. Um, but a few weeks, a couple of weeks before that came out, uh, there was a report which I think is becoming increasingly influential in stock markets, and it was a report by Moody's. Uh, called Macroeconomic Consequences, Trump versus Biden. And the reason I think what's actually happening with this, there's been a review of this in the New York Times, there's been a review of it uh, by Goldman's, and both have been very positive, and their view is that the Biden uh, program is very positive for stock, for stock markets and more positive for uh, uh, than uh, Trump's program is. Uh, Kamala Harris in the in the uh, vice presidential debate pointed out uh, to um, um, Mike Pence that in the Moody's report uh, the <coughs> Democratic program added seven million more jobs than did the um, Republican program. So this is generating a, a view that it'd be a really good thing if Biden get, Biden got elected. Uh, and what I want to do today is I want to look through the macroeconomic uh, forecasts that uh, Mark Zandi makes and compare them to what the Federal Reserve thinks. And uh, when I do that, where I get to is that I think that the reason that Mark Zandi generates these very optimistic outlooks for the U.S. economy for the Biden program uh, is he's vast around these starting from a point which is vastly lower than where the Fed thinks the US market is going to go. So, uh, in fact, what the Biden program is doing is it just adding back to the US economy uh, growth that the uh, Federal Reserve thinks is already going to be there uh, with the natural recovery of the US economy. When we look at the Biden uh, program, uh, spending is 7.3 trillion US dollars, almost like real money. Uh, that's about 34%, uh, 36% of the US economy. Uh, and ta of that, taxes raise 4.1 trillion uh, US dollars to provide a deficit of 3 trillion US dollars. Now, Trump's deficit, when we, when we look at the next piece, not this piece, in the next piece, what we'll see, the Trump's deficit is, is of that, or of it's about two, tri two and a bit trillion as opposed to three trillion. So they're not so much different. The programs aren't so much different on the, the level of uh, the deficit. They are enormously different on the level of taxation. Uh, the Biden program raises $4.1 trillion of tax. Of that, $960 billion dollars 0.96 trillion is on individuals, which reduces incentive. 9.97 uh, 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 billion or 0.977 trillion uh, is on payroll taxes, which reduces employment. And more importantly, uh, 2.1 trillion of taxes is on corporate profits by increasing uh, corporate profits tax, which reduces investment. Um, uh, and what, where this money is spent is it goes to increase consumption, increase programs, uh, social programs. Now, I've, I've talked about this problem previously within the Australian context, and I think I'd, I'd probably call it the populist paradox, but the view is that it's electorally safe to steal from business in the short term and then provide the money to uh, the general population. And uh, you're not damaging, you're not taxing any special interest groups that might vote for you. Uh, and of course, uh, there's endless amounts of money being created by business anyway, and that doesn't affect the economy. 
Whereas my problem uh, was when this was done within the Australian Labor Party was going to do something like this, is that the effect of re increasing business taxes is to reduce business investment. And the uh, multiplier, the GDP multiplier over a five year period of investment is vastly greater than the multiplier of increasing consumption. I think within the US case, that a dollar of increased investment adds about $5 over a five year period to the US economy. I think about a dollar of increased consumption expenditure adds about a dollar fifty over five years to the US economy. Uh, so if you take two trillion US dollars uh, away from investment and put it to consumption, uh, you've taken away 10 trillion to the US economy and, and replaced it with three trillion to the US economy over five years' time. So this damages long-term growth. Anyway, uh, that's my view. Well, what, but what's more interesting is the Fed's view of where growth would be without this program at all. What the Fed thinks in their uh, outlook was provided on the 16th of February uh, was that growth this year in the US economy would be minus 3.7. Zandi starts from a position of, uh, of minus 4.9. Uh, uh, growth in both according to the Fed and according to Zandi, this is a, this is if the Biden program is passed in full and uh, and all this money is is taxed and taxed and, and spent. Uh, but um, Zandi thinks that growth <laughs> next year will be 4.2 percent. The Fed thinks it will be four. The real difference in growth is in 2022, where the Fed thinks growth will be three percent. Um, in, um, uh, in GDP, but mo significantly more than that under the Biden program. And uh, growth then gets back to about the same kind of level in 2023. So importantly for employment, where we get to is that Zandi says unemployment now will be 9.1%. The Fed says it'll be 76 but where full employment is, or where the Fed thinks full employment is in the long term, is 4.1%. And it says that even uh, its standard outlook now is that by 2023, US unemployment will be 4%. And Zandi, with all the money that is spent by the Biden program, only gets unemployment down to 4.1%. So the point is that when we look at the context of the Biden program and its benefit to the US economy in comparison to where the Fed already believes the market's going to go, it's a lot of activity for no economic benefit. Um, so I'm calling the piece Zandi versus the Fed. And uh, what I think is uh, it sort of takes away the view that uh, the Biden program is beneficial for financial markets. But I'll talk about the implication of that again closer to uh, election time.